Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. for that there of course there is this is the acquia podcast why don't you introduce yourself to all of us and and tell us uh, what you do great Uh, my name is ambrosia vertesi and i work at a company called hootsuite which is a social relationship platform or a social management platform. And I head up uh, talent or HR, corporate social responsibility, internal communications. And so I've been, for the past almost five years, managing the hypergrowth of that organization from I was employee 20 and now we're 1,000 employees in 12 countries now. Wow. So I will link to this. You recently were a co-keynote speaker. Yeah at a LinkedIn conference about uh, talent HR recruiting. Mm -hmm. It's a great presentation. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks. You've come up with a concept that is turning into some sort of a movement, I guess. Um, (laughs) Hashtag is HROS. Yes. And so talk a little bit about what's going on with this, how, uh, you know, when it started, what the idea was, and, and what kind of what kind of sharing is going on, and I'd especially like to know what you've learned from others, like something that you never would have seen unless you had started this culture of, of sharing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I was my own, I guess, best use case at Hootsuite, because when I started, I was the sole practitioner, and so I think I, I oversaw four departments, two in theory, because we were 20 people, but I was in Vancouver, um, which is known mostly for regional offices and mining, and, and it had some tech hubs, but mostly regional offices. And so we weren't in, you know, uh, the epicenter of innovation and startups. We were in a place that the ecosystem was just growing around us. We needed to collaborate. We're also a third-party API, so we need to collaborate. And that idea, I was like, this is a perfect example of the kind of organization that those things coupled with the fact that I was really empowered by our founder to take risks and really find a different way to do HR um, fundamentally that I was like, this is my opportunity to see if this thing is is real. And so it started very much so out of necessity and and being empowered to take a risk. And um, that was me reaching out to people and being like, I'm the only person here. I'm, you know, trying to find a different way to do things. Was it like a let's have lunch call? And by the way, this is what, you know, it did was, you break it to them soft or did you? I broke it soft. I was very much so like, this is the problem I'm trying to solve. Do you have a, the how? Because a lot of times people talk about why you should do something and what you should do. And if you read Forbes articles about, you know, best workplaces and all that kind of stuff, or performance management should be dead. And I'm like, but okay, but how are you going to ensure that you have a high performance culture that's fair and equitable for people? Um, so the how is missing from anything you read online and in safe, safe circles and closed doors, people are telling me the how. And I was like, but the how isn't competitive intelligence. That should be baseline. What's competitive intelligence is, is really, you know, me taking that and making sure it fits with my organization that I've probably married it with four or five different other hows to create a Frankenstein that works for me. It's alchemy. And so I don't, there are things I see as competitive intelligence, compensation, stuff like that. It is, of course, our how house. many foosball tables and <laughs> do you have? But more, okay, <laughs> then you need to hire a, one of my first challenges was I need to hire a hundred people in eight months with $5,000. How do I even start looking at something like that in Vancouver, Canada? Um, <laughs> and that, you know, that's a how. That's a, that's a how do you hyperscale that fast? Or a social HR. You know, right away, our founder was like, if you're going to be in this business, you have to believe in what we're building and you have to bring it into your practice. Mm. I wasn't a social native when I came in. So you had to kind of do this in a very open way as well because yeah. that... Because you're a social business? Yes. 
Wow. So in, in a way, actually, right, the nature of Hootsuite was pushing you in this direction. Yes. Okay, so you made the call, you had the lunch, yeah. um, and you, you're telling your colleagues, so, so, or you're asking, so you're telling them your problems yeah. and saying, here, I need help. Can you hook me up with something? How did they respond? Yeah. I found that they were very collaborative. And I think that, you know, that the HR practitioners, especially leaders, you know, people think of them as gatekeepers and all this, but that was never my experience. My experience has been that anybody I've ever sent a bat signal out and said, I need some help here. Um, people have come and helped me. And then I've reciprocated when I was able to do that. And what I felt like was my ability to reciprocate a lot of the time was this emerging technology of social HR. And in the beginning, it was very, well, you've got this and I've got this. Maybe they worked at a 40,000 person company and they could spend half a million dollars on you know, testing something to make sure it was going to scale. Oh, gosh. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, I know what you should do in 10 minutes if somebody says something unsavory on social media. I know how you can get that through IT, PR. Here's a policy. Um, so it was really about equal value proposition. It wasn't just about solving a need. I felt as though we could give something back and that every HR practitioner dis would have something they're up against you know, whether it was growth or even, you know, going back, that they could give an equal value reciprocity if they got over themselves and the stereotypes and the reputation. So in open source technology, um, code especially, uh, we, have a, <clears throat> we have an idea which is, which is um, so perfection yeah. is the enemy of done. And there's a lot of times when you should write that code, in Drupal's case, we'd say a module or something. You know, you write some functionality and you get it out there. And in our case, then we have tens of thousands of developers yep. who are also building websites and, and web applications. And if, if you've written a piece of functionality that a client of yours needs, it's very, very likely that somebody else needs that. Right. 99% of business problems are non-unique. And I'm yep. sure that's your case as well. And if you write a solution that is at least useful, yeah. right, somebody else is going to need that solution as well. And then you have this um, group of smart professionals mm -hmm. who are going to take it and, oh, look, that is exactly what I need. But if you do this uh, this way, then it will run twice as fast. I'm going to add these other five functions that I need, and, and then I'm going to give that back. So you put the idea out there, and you get credit, like karma, yeah. essentially, for putting the idea out there, and then they give this thing back to you, and it's better, and it's shinier, and it's faster, yeah. right? And then multiply that, in our case, by, you know, 30,000 developers or more, yeah. and I'm never the smartest person in the room, and I'm certainly never the best developer in the room, right? Um, so, and everyone else, right, has their own problems, mm -hmm. and, and so all of a sudden you sort of open the doors mm -hmm. so that everybody, like, I, if I say I am weak here, but I'm strong, and you know, if you say I'm weak here, I need help, someone helps you, and as other people um, open up and say that, then you're gonna spot the opportunities mm -hmm. where you can be strong, where you, you know something, like yeah. you know social, right? right. That's so, so, and is that happening, that kind of collaboration? Absolutely, and I think it always was. I by no means think that like, you know, we single-handedly started this collaborative effort, but my, my thought was that you know, we could bring this out into the into the practitioner space instead of it being, you know, a group of people who were, you know, somebody answered the phone because I had Hootsuite and then we're, we're sharing because we know each other. Or you, you know, what if you're an emerging practitioner? Right. And, and so it was a way to even the playing field and a way to showcase actually as well that HR is very innovative and they are very collaborative and they do want to support each other. And that nobody does have the, the perfect answer and the perfect solve. Um, so let's all work on it together and openly. And the solve, like you said, might not actually come from the practitioners. It might come from the employees. Mm. They might come back and say, hey, we saw that you just did, you know, for us, for example, um, we put out our um, uh, recruiting metric report. And it's just a very low hanging piece of fruit that people can build for free on Google Docs. But data is so important and the, a lot of the recruiting software isn't that great. And so we Frankensteined something. And one of our engineers saw it and he said, that's a really great report, but did you know you could do this? 
And that was an employee solve. Now I'm building a partnership with my employees. It's not HR builds behind closed doors with the leadership team and a couple key stakeholders and then pushes it into the world for you to eat. It's more about we're all working on this together because we're partners in this business. Right. We're trying to solve this set of problems. Right. And we see it in, in marketing with customers all the time. Customers, you take customer feedback and you build based on that. And HR has those things in employee engagement surveys. But we work in real-time environments now. Um, Glassdoor shows us that. Social media shows us that. Um, we don't have two to three years to take an employee engagement survey, activate what the 10% we believe that is quantifiable and build. I'm building as the bus is moving, the wheels are going on. Mm. And for me, and I believe for a lot of HR practitioners, the there are always things that are going to take a lot of time. Immigration takes a lot of time, entity establishment, payroll, all of those things. But the stuff that is servicing people's daily jobs and removing roadblocks and empowering them should be done in collaboration, it should be done openly, and it should be up for debate. And so you've created an explicit space for this, right? Yeah. An explicitly open, apparent community for doing this instead of the, I'll call my buddy, you call so-and-so, yeah. you know, we'll do this over drinks. Uh, so, so I love, you've created a commons now, and, and um, I read a couple of the case studies. I really, mm. I really like it so far. Um, people can check this out yeah. at hros.co yeah and hootsuite has a couple of case studies up and i guess yeah. that's at hootsuite.com slash hros well they're all on the hros.co oh, okay. so one of the great things um about hootsuite was going to you know presenting this to the executive team and saying we want to be innovators within this innovative organization, um, but we don't want to be seen as, you know, it just being in social because we're actually building a lot of stuff our team is proud of and we want to help other practitioners. And maybe it's not perfect because we're all hyper growth organizations and some stuff is just duct taped, but then people can help us get better. And that's just going to bring the organization forward. Right. Whatever organization. Whatever is. organization it is. And so Hootsuite allowed us an opportunity to start you know, to just put some stuff out there and gauge interest to see if people were actually interested in this idea. And if it was, then they would throw some fuel behind it, help us get momentum, and then we would make it brand agnostic and we would move it outside of the organization. So one of the contributions that you're making to this community right from the beginning mm -hmm. is actually that you're good at social and that you can test the ideas that people are interested in right. very quickly. Yeah. And so instead of saying you guys should use Periscope and do all these social activities, it's Here's how we built a global employer social program in five days. And here's what we got wrong. And here's what we learned. And here's what you need to consider, especially if you're a publicly traded company. And we know that because we've worked with 2,000 enterprise organizations that we did this with. So I was on a call um, today before we got talking. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working on a case study with a very, very large company about a technical implication. And it's interesting. And it has, you know, it delivers value. And it's, it's, it is actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going through the case study structure and the kind of information I wanted to know. And um, actually, based on watching your keynote, I said, so some of the background information, actually, even if we don't publish it, I really want to know what went wrong. Nothing went wrong. Right. Yeah. Are, are we, we, nothing went wrong. There might be a couple of things that we could do better next time. I said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but it's interesting because um, I'm pretty merciless about, about, uh, in, merciless in a good way about yeah. like trying to get the right amount of open and the, get the information out there so that people can share. Yeah. And it was um it was fascinating because this organization is investing heavily in open source and they're giving back a lot. But still, this like oh, but we I might have to you know it was a, yeah. it was a lovely a lovely moment. So I love the idea of including the the um the the takeaways yeah like the do this don't do this yeah or here here's what we thought and here's what ended up here's what we thought in theory based on what we knew and here's how it, it showed up in practice and that vulnerability i think was you see it missing in conferences i love conferences we all love conferences but people are there as brand advocates and they often tell a story of like why you should do something what they did and how it worked and we planned this exactly like exactly. this right from the beginning. And it was amazing. And here's, <laughs> you should do that. And then you, what I found um, going to a lot of conferences is that I would 
I would have all these ideas and then I'd, I'd walk away with two things. I have no idea how they did that. So I'm going to have to follow up with another conversation. And that's the only way I'm going to find out what didn't work. And to me, that was like leading with the wrong foot. That's what your, that's what your, you know, after conference beer budget is for. Right. But instead, my hope was that we would go to conferences and lead with not only the why, the what, and the how, but then a tangible takeaway, a Take that template and decide if this is something you care about. And maybe it's something that you apply because you have a, you know, HR is constantly bootstrapped for cash. And so here's a free template. Go and see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, then that's fine because we're, it, it was what we already shared what might or might, may or may not work for you. Um, but also the idea being that sometimes it isn't taking the resource. Sometimes it's actually validating what you're doing. You might actually say that's a great idea, but what we're doing is the right solution for us. And that's really great to leave a conference, not just hearing about all the things that you could be doing. But, you know. Right, right. That you actually got something right is a, is a great feeling. It's a great course. feeling. And so, but I think yeah. in the same case, when people share their HR OS stories, you yeah. know, someone's going to be able to say, um, you know, oh, hey, wow. So actually, Steps one through five, that's all stuff I do. But this other thing, that's a great like exactly. addition. So in my case, you've already changed how I work, mm. right? In terms of, of more explicitly talking about um, like false starts and mistakes mm -hmm. uh, uh, along the way. Even if I might not write that into a final product, if I, I believe that if I have that background, I'm better equipped to understand the whole situation and explain right. it. So And us as, as practitioners, I mean, there there's this kind of, uh, you need to be connected to your employees because they're your customers. And so if our team sees us saying, we did this thing and we here's the parts that we missed, then now I've been humanized to them. Now they're able to come and tell me when things might not be perfect because I'm not projecting and I'm not posturing and I'm not guarding against. And there are things in, in your job in HR that are very, you know, they're very serious, they're very regulated, they're very compliance driven, but there are sandboxes where you can be, have a lot of fun and you can really connect with people. And we want to put, you know, some of those things out there to, to educate not only employee or not only HR people, but employees, because the more they understand about our profession, the more they understand how to, how we can work together to build a culture and to build a company that we both want to be at. Right. So... Elevator pitch style. Ooh. What are the geeks getting right with their open source software ideas and practices? And what should business people be? Uh, what should business people know about that mm -hmm. and be be taking away from that? Yeah, I think high level. Um, it starts with the mindset. So the mindset of we're all in this together. Let's work on this together. Let's support and share. Um, those are things that businesses should be taking into their practices. We're all intellectual capital businesses. Those things, it doesn't matter if you're in restaurants, those fundamental practices create amazing workflows and better businesses. And I think that the engineers got it that right. And all of the other little things, sure, the peer review might not be perfect. Somebody's doing this, somebody's trying to monetize off of that. I have no interest in that. At the very highest level, that is the right mentality, I believe, to build your business on. Applica the, the, the details can be applied in any number yeah. of ways. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, cool. I, I think that those are unique to every domain. Um, what you guys really value might be something very specific mm. and we might not value it. But if we're all aligned at 100,000 feet above, whatever makes you unique in your own domain, I think is probably practical. That's the one-to-one -one solution. The one-to-many solution is the mindset, the vulnerability, um, the collaborativeness, and putting it out there, um, I think is the big takeaway for HROS and the big thing that we've been able to not only do at Hootsuite, but in five months, we have eight case studies. We've gotten companies like Oracle, who isn't notoriously known for opening the kimono to people. They are actually have an incredible HR department who not only shares openly and shares their best practices, but shares what they did for free, shares the challenges they have on budget. And people have a tendency to think that, you know, certain companies have it easy, but we're all up against it. And we're all trying to do this with this. And that's not unique um, to 
just one company's battle. I think that we're all going to move forward if we all just have that bit of um, mentality to be able to say, okay, all the practical applications, the, the how we do it might be very different. But if we're aligned on the why, then we'll, we'll partner with each other. And I think that's really the only way we're going to get an engaged workforce. It sounds like this HROS community is off to a great start. Yeah. Please invite me to your first conference. <laughs> um, so, changing gears now. Yeah. Shameless plug for Hootsuite. Go. Ooh. Well, I believe that it's very evident by now, but if you are not on board with this, that social is changing the way the world communicates. And there will not be one winner. There will not be one Facebook. There will always be multiple places that you're able to manage what you want to do. But Hootsuite helps you aggregate all of those logins, all of those things into one place so that you can manage all of your social media. You can optimize it. You can engage. You can collaborate. You can measure all your results. Then you can get back to doing your life, which is a really important part for us is that we simplify it for people and optimize it for people so that they can go out and get back to what they're doing. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Thank you for having for, me. For, for, for taking the time to come in. It's been really it's been it's been really great. And I um I really do highly recommend checking out um her uh keynote from the LinkedIn. What was it called exactly? LinkedIn Connect Conference. Yes, it's great. I will link to it in the show notes for sure. Great. Um and um depending on whether I get that pro subscription or not, <laughs> I will tweet about this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Please give me a free pro, pro subscription. <laughs> I love I love the asks on camera because <laughs> I will do what I can, Jim. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut that part out. <laughs> you got it. Can you, can you edit that? <laughs> I'm putting that after every question. <laughs>